do that properly. All right, now you did. Okay, so here we go. Yesterday, you did a super great job of um, doing research, but uh, some of us struggled a little bit on finding solutions. So Mrs. Harrison is gonna spend a little bit of time um, showing, uh-oh, Mrs. Aubin just keeps bouncing from place to place. Are you extra energetic today, Mrs. Aubin? All right. <laughs> All right. Just electronically crazy today. All right. This, um, Evan, thank you. That would be great. Hard to hear you. All right. So water around the world. We uh, know that, that we are focusing on all kinds of different places. And what I'd really like to, oh, I still have too many voices. That's better. Thank you. Um, so hopefully you noticed when you were doing looking at the source, the resources that were available yesterday, hopefully you noticed that they were coming from all over the world. That, that, that as you clicked on different places, we had some local places, like the, the, there was an article in, about Colorado, there are some in California, there are some in Michigan, there are, you know, I, I picked the United States places, as well as Pakistan and Africa and all these other, and a bunch of other places. Because it really is a world problem, isn't it? The water crisis is, is really something that the whole world is dealing with, not just far, far away and not just right here in our neighborhood. It's everywhere. So that's what makes it so important for you to, when you're looking for your solutions and your resources today, Try to pick some from different places because would your essay be better if you have a lot of different ideas from different places than just, you know, one, right? That'll help it. That'll help when you are giving your PSA at the end of the year. If you send your PSA, you know, it's really amazing and you want to send, uh, you want to send the link to your grandma in Texas, say. You want it to be just as important to her in Texas as if you were sending it to somebody else in, you know, in uh, Oregon or in New York, right? So the more ideas you have, the better. So today we actually have two sets of learning targets. I'm going to finish yesterday's first, and then we're going to work on, then we're going to be going into when I asked you guys to bring your colored pencils and things, we're going to go ahead and take that essay and look at how we organize that and your note catchers and color your note catchers so they coordinate with your essay. So that'll, when tomorrow, when we start the essay, you'll have it all organized already. All right, but we, I want you to get a little bit of time, little bit more time of research, okay? Yes, Mrs. Isabel. Okay, so when, we're, when we get ready to do the research, you can run over and grab them real quick. We're gonna do the research first, so no worries. All right, so a reminder about what our job is. Um, you're working in a group, you're using different resources, you're maximizing your time by, by using a variety of sources. I didn't do a very good job yesterday of um, talking about the books that I had gathered um, because they were behind me and I forgot them is really what it was. Um, uh, my friends at home, unfortunately, I don't have an electronic version of these. But if you finish all the res if you and your partners re finish all the resources that are on the place, you can certainly use the internet. Um, but I would rather you know um, you finish all the resources that are available that I picked out first than just randomly searching for things. But inside this box, inside this um, container, we have a lot of interesting books. Our World of Water, Children, and Water Around the World. And so you oh, just open it up and and see about real kids and how they are dealing with different water situations and how they have solved um, how they get water. And you will find a lot of different um, ways that people have so tried to solve this problem, um, depending on where they live. And so this is an awesome book. This one is called A Cool Drink of Water. Um, it shows again where different people from around the world, how they ac access that water. This one is interesting if you are, um, uh, well, actually, any group, really. Actually, I, I was going to say, since this is clean water, maybe the people with pollution might want this book. But actually, clean water is also an access problem, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's part of the access problem. And there's this one page that says getting water to people um, and, it, and explains all kinds of different ways that they are getting water in different places in cities. So demand, you could even use this book. There are two books called Water Wow, an in, in, infographic exploration. And again, it's got a page, you got, you know, how people, how water gets to you, um, how people use the water and how, you know, pollution issues, all kinds of things. There's two of those. Not a drop to drink is another one about how people have to deal with this situation. And every last drop, bringing clean water home. These are really not only pretty books, but they're also useful. So if you decide to use a book today, that's great. Just make sure you're reading and not just shopping on the pictures, right? Just looking at the pictures. All right, so you have lots of resources. Could you also use your One Well book? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Could you also use your EL workbook? Yeah. Yes. You have lots of resources, my friend. Tons and tons of things that you can use um, today. So we are going to give you a little extra time, not forever, so but a little bit of amount of time. But what Mrs. Oven and I noticed yesterday is that you guys were struggling with the idea of, in fact, I looked at uh, everybody who said, who um, turned in their um, note catcher online. You guys did great job. Um, I returned it to you if you turned it in so you can go to, back to it and add to it today. You just need to go into your Google Docs and it'll be right there so you can add to it. But I did return that assignment yesterday so you can get back in because it wouldn't allow you to work on it if I didn't return it. So that's why I've returned it to you. But um, so I just want to take a little minute, moment again of explaining about how the solutions, are the solutions pretty important? Yes. Now, interesting facts and interesting I, um, information, that certainly is something that I want you to look for too. But if you have a whole bunch of that and no solutions, are you going to have a weird looking essay? Yeah. You're going to have a lot of yellow, but not a lot of blue. So you need to look at both of those. So I'm going to show you just a couple of things what I mean, because you're right. There are a lot of interesting information and um, there's a lot of facts and things that you can pick up, but it, I want you to also make sure that you match however many of these you have. You also have enough in the, oh, is it just gonna be naughty? Oh good, no, it's not. All right, so I wanted to show you just a couple of options. So when you're looking in the water solution, the, the pollution resources, um, I know that Noah yesterday was reading. Oh, is it going to be super slow to me for me today? That's great. Um, he was looking for the marathon swimmer. He, he, right, Noah, he was looking at the marathon swimmer. So I want to pull that up and show how you can find solutions, even though there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So this came from the pollution resources. And I'm just going to do an example real quick so that everybody can see how you read, when you read through that, what you're really looking for. All right, so and it, some of you could add some stuff right after I'm done here, because if you're pollution, these also will work for you, won't they? All right, so this says marathon swimmer crosses the Pacific to fight plastic pollution. Benoit Le, uh, Lecomte is really a really strong swimmer. He started swimming across the Pacific Ocean on June 5th. He plans to be able to swim across the whole ocean. It will take him six months. Lecomte had to prepare for many challenges. He might face sharks and very cold water. It is certain he will face what scientists call plastic smog. Plastic smog is the gathering of tiny plastic pieces in the sea. Things like water bottles are made of plastic. Plastic does not break down easily though. It ends up in a landfill or washed out into the ocean. So I think that's a really interesting thing. I've never heard of plastic smog until I read this article a little while ago. But plastic smog, I didn't, I was thinking smog, I think of smog in the air. But can you imagine swimming and all of a sudden just running into a big pile, basically a floating plastic? That's pretty interesting. So I would go ahead and say, okay, I think that's something I want to add in my essay if I'm pollution. So, cause I think that's super interesting. So I would add that to my, oh, why is it not working? Um, I would add that to my note catcher over here under the interesting facts. I would go ahead and say something about plastic smog to remind myself, plastic 
smog. You don't have to be copying this. I'm just showing you, all right? Plastic smog is floating piles of plastic. Where is it located? In the ocean. So yes, that is an interesting fact. That is something I could add to my work. But did I get a solution out of this yet? No. no. But this man, it said in the article, didn't it? That he is working to help solve this problem. So I, but I haven't figured out how he's helping yet. I just know that he's swimming. All right. So I have to keep going, don't I? I have to keep reading because I, I need at least one solution out of here. Well, um, he's from France. His swim started in Japan, though. He will swim to San Francisco, California. Every day he swims eight hours. His swim will cover more than 5,000 miles. In the Pacific, there's a huge area of plastic smog. It's as big as three countries, Germany, France, and Britain together. Wow. Could I write that down to my interesting facts? Yeah. Yes, but I'm not going, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend that time, but that would be something I could add. Have I come up with a solution yet? No. Still not. Should I, but do I need to keep looking? Yes, yes I still need to keep looking. All right. So I'm going to. Okay. So just wait until, how about you stay and listen? And then as soon as we go to research, you can go grab it. Okay. All right. The United Nations did a new study. The UN is a group of countries working to better the world. The study says plastic pollution is a major world problem. Some plastic takes thousands of years to break down. The study says the plastic pollutes the ground, the water and ground. There are danger, dangerous, hey Logan, can you turn around for me? There are dangerous chemicals in plastics. These harmful chemicals can make people sick. They are har they're harming hundreds of animals already. Last week, a whale died in Thailand. It had eaten plastic bags. Another thing I could add to my information, right? Is that still we had a solution yet? No. Okay. Then this talks about how Americans um, also um, are contributing to the problem, how much we use of plastic. Now, here we get to the swimmer, Lacomte, wants more people to see the trouble in the ocean. He had to learn about pollution too. His father taught him to swim in the Atlantic. As a child, he said he would never, said, Lacomte said he would never see plastic on the beach. Now, everywhere I go on the beach, I see plastic everywhere. So what is he doing? What is he doing to help people know more about pollution? Josh, what's he doing? He's picking up plastic. So he's not picking up plastic, no. He's swimming across the ocean. But when he's swimming across the ocean, what are people going to find out about him? Yes. 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 Isn't it impressive he's, he's swimming 5,000 miles? Do you think the news, the, oh, this article's about him. Do you think the news are going to do a news article maybe on him? Yeah. Do you think he might be on TV? Yeah. Do you, so what is he doing to help the problem? Lila? Excellent. So he's doing something to show others about the problem, isn't he? He's showing them. So that's what I would write down in my solutions. You could say um, people can do um, extraordinary things to get attention about the problem if if he had, if I hadn't read this article, would I know about plastic smog? No, you might not have known about plastic smog before I just did this little bit here. But now we all know, don't we? So is he helping the situation? Yes. Is it really about him swimming? No, but he, but by by showing him swim through the plastic smog, do you think that's going to get some attention? Yes. Do you think that might make you think a little bit about using? Water bottles instead of your, your reusable water bottle instead of one of our other water bottles, if we can. Mm -hmm. Definitely, right? Because this plastic is the plastic they're talking about, right? But your water bottle is going to be used over and over again. So that might, if you think about that big plastic smog area, that might give you an idea. Ooh, are my water bottles a way better thing to use, right? 
So that's my solution is people can do something to get the attention. Could that be something you put in your essay? Yes, for sure. All right, I'm gonna just give the people who are doing demand just a really quick, because I know that that one is also sometimes a little bit troubling. So I just want, again, we're looking for solutions, right? Looking for solutions. All right, so there's this great one here. It says, students try to save water. Did you? Good. So you might notice that they, they actually made a new law. They helped pass a new law. So let's just read real quickly a little bit about that. And so how does that become a solution? All right. How does, oh, it's just spinning. All right, here we go. I have to be patient. Mrs. Harrison wants to get started, so it's hard to be patient. So here are some students. Here's the picture. It says, Philip Chen, a, lawnmake, a lawmaker, sits with Fiona Paredes and Jessica Gallegos. Paredes and Gallegos talk to lawmakers about their water conservation bill. The bill was a school project for students who are known as water guardians. All right. So there's this article, and so they four students went to the California government, and they yeah they went to go talk about a new bill, and then if that bill passes, it becomes a law. Students presented a bill that they wrote. It was based on a school project. If the bill passes, their schoolwork could change state law. The four students call themselves the Water Guardians. Their bill is all about saving water. Some water suppliers give money back to customers who don't waste water. This gives people a good reason to waste less. The bill says water suppliers must include schools in the program. That way schools will want to waste less water too. They will save some money if they do. All right, do you think our school district would like to save some money if we use less water? Yes, would that encourage, and if they encourage us as a school to use less water, would that be a good thing? Yeah. Yes, and it also helped the school district too, right? So again, uh, I'm not gonna read the whole article, but did we find out one thing people could do? Yeah. We could pass new laws. Oh, sorry, you're right. Pass new laws that encourage schools to save water. Okay, do you see how I got that out of the article? It's a solution, right? If you're a demand, you can go in and maybe add that one to yours. We really need to make sure that we have a balance and that information on this side and on this side just so that you don't end up with so much information that your yellow section's too big or your, you want your yellow and your blue section to be even in your essay. Yes, Ms. Lila? Can you make it a little bit bigger? Um, actually, I'm going I'm to get rid of it all together in a second So, because I want you guys to get to your job. All right. So we are, again, going to do a little bit of re more research so you have some time. It's only going to be about 15, 20 minutes, okay? So it's not a huge amount of time. But I loved yesterday, especially my friends online. My remote kids, when I put you guys in breakout rooms, you guys did an awesome job, all right? I want you to continue with that. You're going to have the same breakout rooms as yesterday. My friends in here, I saw a lot of people helping. Other people find information. Um, some people were getting caught up on who gets to do, who got to watch what video and who got to read what article. Remember, if you're all helping each other, right? So even if you don't get to read that article or watch that video, you're going to still be able to get information from that person, right? To fill in. All right. So you're a team. Your success uh, and to fill out that note catcher is directly related to how well you guys work as a team, right? Okay. Anybody have any questions about what I'm asking you to do for about the next 15, 20 minutes? Yes, look, August. Are we going to the same page? You need to go to the same page. So you're going to go to today's uh, assignment. I put I put all the resources on today's assignment. Um, my friends online, you're going to pull up your document that you gave, that you shared with me yesterday because you can type in it again. You can add more stuff to it, and I'll get to see it. You don't have to share it with me again because I'll just pull it up at the end of the time. So, yep, you're just going to go to today's assignment. 
And it's right here, lesson seven for Thursday. Ooh, Mrs. Harrison needs a capital T. Too late last night when she typed everything. Here's your access resources, your demand resources, and your pollution resources. Astria, do you have a question? Are they the same as same yes, same group as yesterday. Because you guys are you you've already decided, you know, you've already gotten some good stuff. You can divide and conquer some more. Any other new questions? All right, you guys are ready? Okay, so my friends, I'm at home. I'm going to put you in your breakout groups. You did an excellent job yesterday. Mr. Jensen, you'll definitely have to turn on your camera for your, your group so they can see you, please. So right now for me. Thank you, buddy. Perfect. All right. Everybody go ahead and meet together. I'm going to grab my breakout groups. I'm going to... Mrs. Harrison, you're muted. Thank you, Jensen. <laughs> I was talking to myself, wasn't I? All right, ready to rock. Every, um, Charlie, are you ready, Mr. Park? All right, this is where I need us to be really good listeners because this comes onto our next learning target. Hopefully, you got. <clears throat> oh, I'm doing that yelling thing again because I'm talking over people. Thank you. So I just asked you to research to build your knowledge about solutions, right? About ways to solve these problems. So how do we feel about how we did? Five, meaning we did really well. One, meaning, gosh, I wish I had more time and more, more information. Okay. All right, I got a lot of fours and some three. Okay, thank you. All right, so our next section that we're gonna work on is, hey, now that we have all of our research, now that we have all this stuff on our note catchers, great, but we now need to do what? Organize it so that we can actually use it for our essay. So our learning target is I can plan an opinion essay that states an opinion and has reasons that are supported by facts and details. So we're planning today. That's what we're doing. We're not writing today, but we're getting ready to plan. But planning is important because that's gonna help us make it easier to do our job. So remember that we have our, our prompts and we're building, um, it says water pollution, but it's whatever your particular situation is, right? So if your demand on water, then that, that would be what this would say, or access to water. So a well-written opinion text needs to give reader the information to understand the topic, right? So that's why we were doing some research so you could become experts, so you could really explain it well. You need to give opinions about how we can solve it by providing facts and details. Did we get some of those today? That was our job, right? And then we have to connect our opinion with re and our reasons with eventually with linking words and phrases. We'll do that later. And we also obviously have to write knowing that we have all of our spelling, our grammar, capitalization, punctuation eventually, right? So thinking about that. All right, now we have this section here. Yes. All right, so we know that we had our essay, our opinion essay, and it had different colors depending on the different parts, right? Yeah. All right. So we know that our note catcher probably is coordinated in a similar way, right? With similar colors, okay? So we know that we started out with an introduction that's red. It's something that catches the reader's attention. That's probably actually not on your, on your note catcher. However, it might be, and I'll show you where it might be if you have it on the new note catcher that I gave you. It's probably not on the one that has the boxes, all right? But we're gonna color in a minute, so you'll see that. Then we have our, point one or our proof paragraph one, why it's a problem. We have our how we're gonna solve it, which is our gonna be our blue, our second proof paragraph. And then we're gonna wrap it up with a conclusion at the end. So it's gonna look a little bit more like this and you'll notice the colors changed a little bit. All right, so I want you to think about which topic, which particular issue, Mr. Logan, I would like you to come up here with your materials, please up to the front, thank you. 
if you're having a hard time focusing you back in your spot so bring all your colors and everything because we're going to color all right so i need you to turn in your workbook and mrs Aubin's going to help me with this a little bit to help you find the right page but at the top of the note catcher that i have for you right it says what page in your workbook you need to be working on so if you are water pollution you're turning to page 34 in your workbook if you are demand for water it says page 30 no sorry page 27 if you're demand raise your hand your demand for water if you're in the demand for water group you're going to look at page 27 in your workbook if you're water pollution raise your hand you're looking at page 34 if you are access to water you are on page 22. so everybody needs to open their workbook to that page that goes with your um, particular demand your particular need okay so everybody so it, it should be on the top of their lovely things so friends okay so if you're access so i still see some people who don't have their workbooks open you need to be open to the page that goes with your situation you need to open to page 22 if you are access so i want to make sure you you don't want to color the wrong one right because that'll be a bummer when you're using it to write so make sure you have the right one if whatever page at the bottom number needs to match the one that's on your catcher okay so everybody where's the other catcher you need both no catchers out. So we're going to cover code both of them. Perfect job. There's your no catcher. I need to read my no catcher as well because we're going to color both of them. All right. So I'm looking for both. 34, 34. Good job. Oops. 22, 22. 34, 34. 34, 34. 27, 27. Good job. All right, you guys are asked? All right. So my friends at home, make sure. So that would mean that Ben, Haley, and Leo should all be doing page 22, right? Double check that you have page 22. And then that means Jensen, Gavin, Charlie, and Ethan are all on page 34. Should be coloring page 34. Now the sections are all the same, right? The sections, all four boxes, it doesn't matter which one is yours. Um, I mean, which, it doesn't matter which, they all look the same, right? They all have the four boxes. So yours, if you, I'm gonna use page 22 for my example, okay? But you don't have to, worry about that okay all right you don't, if you have no matter which one you are you need to color yours like i'm going to color mine but i can't i'm not going to color all three of them because that's just too confusing for everybody okay so even though yours may not be the exact same one as mine all right so if we go if we think back to here think back to here okay oh i changed the colors i didn't save it oh no all right that's good i guess i it's a good thing i'm just doing it together all right so what did mrs harrison say about red red's our introduction do we necessarily have anything yet that's red yeah. no so we'll go ahead and put your red to the side for a minute most of our information is going to be in our two proof paragraphs right the first proof paragraph is going to tell what the issue is and how it affects people so any guesses what we're going to color yellow? What do you think, Ms. Lila? The, the first box. Now, I don't want you to color the whole box, okay? Watch what I'm going to do. I just want you to put a nice little frame around the first box, okay? That one is yellow. That's going to help you, Mr. Look, my friend, Mr. Obvious. And it is also the second box. Because you're going to say what the problem is, but you're also going to say what, why that's a, what is it that is impacting everybody? All right. So those are your two yellow sections. Don't color the whole thing yellow. Just make a nice, neat frame around it. Okay. 
This is your yellow section. You might also have some yellow on your other note catcher in the new information section. Now, if you put a fact that you wanna use for your shock value for in your, uh, in your introduction, that might be red. But if you just have a normal thing that you wanna tell people about, you might also make that yellow. All right. So look at your note catcher. Your, so look at your sentences. Elena, looking at your note catcher that looks like mine in this section, not this section, in this section, read your sentences. Which are some more sentences that you might need to use to explain your, explain the problem, your issue? So you might have lots of yellows. You might have lots of different yellow sentences. You might, might have one that has a fact that you really think is impressive that might also be your pink fact, your introduction fact. So you might have something like this. Everything, however, I see a lot of people who are not coloring on this. Every, this side is probably yellow. Or if you have a really amazing fact, you might have a red one. So look, read your, this is a good opportunity right now to read your sentences that you wrote in that second paragraph in your water pollution. I'm gonna show you here. This is a good, oh, see? All right, so it depends on what you're, but I, I, you're the one that wrote them, right? So you know if they're yellow or you should also know if, wow, there was a really important thing. I, I just found this really amazing thing that I want to start my essay with. Then it might be red. But everything else is either going to be yellow or for, and, and your red might be at the top. You're not, you have to choose. Is it yellow? Or is it you have a really amazing fact? You might not. You might not have anything that's red on the right hand side. And that's okay. We're just gathering information. You might not have anything red in that other section unless you found something really super amazing. And then you might have it. All right. But you have to read it yourself. I can't make that choice for you. All right. You did the research. So you decide. So this is then you haven't told anything yet. We're coloring right here. We're deciding what's yellow and what might be red. If you found a really amazing fact, it might be red. Otherwise, if it's just information that you found out that you might want to add to your essay, it'll probably be yellow. All right. So everything on the right hand side should be colored, probably. And one color or the other. And I just and just framing it's a good idea. Don't cover over it. All right. Back to this. All right, if this is the yellow, the yellow is teaching everybody about the problem, right? We want them to understand what the problem is. But then what is our second part of our essay about? Funny? Our solutions, how they can help solve the problem. What color is that, Miss Sunny? Blue. So which part of our work is going, our, our note catchers is gonna be blue? What part do you think is gonna be blue, Josh Carter? Which color, which part of my note catcher do you think might be blue? Noah, help him out. The bottom left, the solutions, right? All the ways that we can solve this problem. That bottom left hand corner. All the ways we, we learned that we can solve our problem. Is that it though? Did we hold you to a whole bunch of other things? Yes, you did. You have this one. Where's our solutions in this one? The left hand side, right? All, anything that's on this side should probably be what color? Blue. Those are all the new solutions you came up with should look something kind of like this. Oh, you're blue. 
If you came up with some solutions, they should all be blue. That's going to go in your second proof paragraph. All right. Okay. Now, okay. We might have some red. We definitely have some yellow. What color have we not gotten to yet? Green. What section is green, do you think? Hmm. What section do you think? Miss Ellie? The bottom right. Yep. Right in here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Here, this section right here is going to help us with our focus statement. Right in there. All right. Bottom right hand corner. All right. Is there any focus statement on our research paper? No. It might help us understand it better, but there isn't anything directly from here that's going to help you. All right. Okay. So we did lots of research, right? We're, now we're organized. We know what information is going to go where. So tomorrow, what do we think we're going to start doing then? We're going to start writing, putting it together, right? Collecting all these ideas and putting them together for our essay. All right, what I would like you to do, and my um, friends at home, obviously you don't have a paper version of this, don't turn in your assignment um, for me. Or actually, you know what, you could, but you can still look at it. From you can you can turn it in, but it doesn't. You don't need to because I'm just going to look at them. So don't feel free. Don't feel like you have to submit the assignment. But if you can, you won't be able to add anything to it. But um, you'll still be able to look at it, which is really important. The rest of you, I want you to put your page right inside your book, right next to the other one. Whatever the two parts that are colored should be together, so you can find them easy together. Okay. Put it nice and neatly right next to the other note catcher inside of your book. All right, my friends, thank you for working so hard today. Hopefully we did some good organizing and we will feel good about our essay tomorrow. All right, thank you, my friends. Um, I will see you guys at 12.45 for some work um, with Mrs. Aubin. And um, we will see you guys. Um, Jensen, do you have a question? Yes, Jensen? It's not really.